To achieve quality service, it's important that you select the right tools. And one of the best tools you can choose is your service literature, since it contains all of the information you'll need to perform quality service on any Mercedes-Benz. But like any tool, an understanding of how to use it properly is the first requirement. Now, if you're familiar with the one model year, one model, one manual workshop literature, you may be wondering, well, what's there to explain? With that system, if you're working on a 1992 Oldsmobile Cutlass, for example, you would refer to this one manual. And everything related to service, diagnosis, or repair would be found in here. Now, this type of literature system is convenient in that everything is found in one manual. But there are two major disadvantages. One is that a lot of shelf space is needed to store all of the manuals as the years go by. And more importantly, these manuals are bound which means that they're frozen in time on the day that they're printed. So any changes, such as modifications made in production or new diagnostic procedures, are not in the manual. So Mercedes-Benz doesn't use the single bound manual system. You won't find one manual that covers service, diagnosis, and repair on, for example, a 1994 300E. Okay, so the bad news is that there's a learning curve involved with using the Mercedes workshop literature. It's not difficult, but it's not as simple as going to a single manual for everything. The good news is that in total, there are far fewer manuals involved, and the manuals are not bound and frozen in time, but they're ring binders that are updated with supplements or microfiche that are simply replaced as necessary. Now, the first thing you'll have to know about using the Mercedes literature is that the operation, or the job that you're going to do, determines the literature that you'll refer to. And the literature is designed according to the principle that there are three types of jobs that technicians perform. First, there's basic service maintenance, such as replacing the fluid and filter in an automatic transmission. Then, there's repair, such as rebuilding a damaged automatic transmission. And finally, there's diagnosis, such as finding the cause of a slipping automatic transmission. So let's take a look at the Mercedes literature system and see how it relates to these three jobs, maintenance, repair, and diagnosis. We'll begin by briefly identifying where the information is found. Maintenance is easy, since there are only three manuals involved, and each manual covers a production period. Repairs are on microfiche and are found in the service microfiche system binder. Using microfiche makes it possible to fit thousands of pages of procedures into this one binder. And diagnostic procedures are found in this series of manuals, which are called diagnostic manuals. Let's take a closer look at these three major literature sources, starting with the maintenance manuals. When you're dispatched a job that involves a scheduled maintenance, a maintenance sheet should be included with the repair order. The maintenance sheet identifies the operations that are required, which are determined by the mileage or by the time interval. Now, the first service done on every Mercedes is an inspection service done only once on all vehicles after an initial break-in period of 3,000 miles. Afterwards, lubrication services are performed at specified intervals depending on model and model year. And these are basically an engine oil and filter change with a few minor additional jobs. And finally, major maintenance services are performed at 15,000 mile intervals. They involve a major inspection and service of the vehicle. At specified maintenance services, additional jobs are required. Now these jobs are dependent on the time or the mileage, and they're highlighted in the shaded areas on the form, such as replacing the brake fluid every two years or additional jobs that are performed every 30,000 miles. Depending on the policy in your shop, these additional jobs will be noted on the RO or possibly identified directly on the maintenance sheet. Now let's take a look at how the maintenance sheet and the maintenance manual tie together. And that basically involves this column with the four-digit numbers. For example, Engine oil and filter change is job number 0101. A complete description of that job will be found under that number 
in the maintenance manual. And saying that a complete description is included is not an overstatement. Looking through the job, you'll find filling capacities, special tools required, the oil viscosity to use dependent on ambient temperatures, and of course, how to do the job. The maintenance manual is an excellent technical reference, in particular for the technician who is inexperienced with Mercedes-Benz. So as you can see, the maintenance manual and maintenance sheet are an effective and simple reference. So now that the concept of a maintenance manual and worksheet for performing maintenance is understood, it's only necessary to take a quick look at the supporting literature for performing a pre-delivery inspection prior to retail delivery of a new Mercedes. The same principle applies. A pre-delivery manual and check sheet ensures that all of the information required to perform a complete pre-delivery inspection is readily available and easy to use. Instead of job numbers as used in the maintenance literature, the PDI check sheet is divided into different parts, such as an underhood inspection. And the manual follows the exact sequence of the PDI sheet, which makes it a simple matter of following the manual and checking off each operation on the sheet as it's performed. New models and changes to existing models will eventually make the manual obsolete. A new addition will be provided as necessary. Next, we'll look at the literature that's needed when a repair is required. As mentioned previously, Mercedes puts repair procedures on microfiche. And since there are a few hundred repair fiche, the first thing necessary is an understanding of how to find the one you need. So let's use an example of how that's done. This Mercedes is dispatched to you, and the repair order states, replace left front window regulator. Well, you've never done that job so you have to go to the book. Where do you start? Well, the first thing that has to be done is to identify the model. The badge on the trunk identifies it as an S350, but that's a sales designation, and the Mercedes service literature doesn't use the sales designation. The service literature uses the factory model designation to organize the information. That number is the first six digits of the complete factory serial number. And since that number is entered on the repair order, it's easy to determine. Also, if there's any need to confirm the number, you can always find the six-digit model ID on the factory-installed production plate that every Mercedes has. These three digits are the model designation. This number identifies the model, or as it's commonly called within the industry, the platform on which a series of different body types are built. The second three digits fingerprint the configuration of the vehicle and will change depending on the engine installed, the number of cylinders, the body style, and so forth. All right, so now you have the model identification, but that's only half of what's needed to locate the correct fiche for replacing the window regulator. It's also necessary to understand the two-digit index system that Mercedes uses. In general, the system can be divided into three major parts with groups 0, 1 through 22 covering engine components and systems, while groups 25 through 55 cover various chassis-related systems and components, such as transmissions, axles, brakes, and steering, and groups 60 through 98 covering the body, which would logically include the window regulator replacement that you're looking for. Now, after a while, you'll become familiar with the group system as you use it, but in the meantime, this pocket reference card will be very useful to you. The card lists the group numbers, the systems, and major components assigned to each group. Now, you won't necessarily find, for example, the window regulator listed. You'll have to look for the major component that the part is associated with. The regulator is mounted in the door, and doors are listed under group 72, so that would be the logical place to look. Going to the microfiche binder, you'll find that the fiche are color-coded and organized sequentially by group number. Replacing the window regulator would be included in this group of green fiche, titled Body Assembly Jobs. Next, the searches for the specific model, which in our case is the 140. 
And finally, the group number identifies the specific fish. If you've only used printed manuals before and haven't used a reader, it's simple. The fiche is turned so that the color band faces you, and it's placed on the carrier. The index of jobs is located at the right front of the grid. Move the pointer to that location. Find removal and installation of the regulator. And the grid coordinates are listed in the column on the right. Move the pointer to these coordinates, and you're ready to start the job. That's an example of finding a repair job in the service microfiche. The example used required a model identification since the job involved a repair on a body component, replacing a window regulator. But if an engine repair is involved, the model identification doesn't apply when you need repair information. That's because the same engine may be used in several different models. The engine identification number is needed instead. The engine number is very similar to a model number. It has six digits, and the first three identify the engine family, while the second three identify the specific application. The complete engine identification number is stamped into all engines, but it can be a little difficult to see on some vehicles. Also, the engine number is found in different locations on different engine types, and in some cases, the vehicle may have to be on a lift to see the number. There's a second pocket card that makes finding the number on the engine unnecessary. With this card, you can use the model designation, which is always easy to find, to determine the engine installed. So for our S350, for example, we determine that the model ID is 14134. First, model 140 is located on the card. Then the second three digits and the engine identification for the engine installed in that vehicle is listed in the engine column. So the engine in this car is a 603971. Several fiches may be provided for that engine. So just like the body fiche, refer to the group system card to locate the group number assigned to the system or component involved. For example, if the job is replacing a camshaft, the valve train is in group 05. And this fiche would be selected to perform the job. Before setting the repair fiche aside, it should be mentioned that all automatic transmissions are also given a three-digit factory designation number, which is 722, with three digits following to identify the application. The fourth digit identifies the version, and that's the number needed to select the correct fiche. The pocket card also includes the transmission version installed in each model. For example, our S350 has the version 3 installed. So the version 3 fiche would have the information needed. One additional point. You'll find two version 3 fiche covering different production periods identified by a date and an arrow. Whenever this is found on a fiche, select the one that covers the production date of the vehicle. If the arrow is in front of the date, it indicates through production date 888. The arrow after the date indicates beginning production date 988. Well, that's basically what you need to know to use the repair fiche. Like any tool, the more you use it, the more efficient you'll become at finding the information needed. Okay, we've seen the literature associated with performing maintenance and with performing repairs. Now, let's look at the third and final function that a technician performs, which is diagnosis, and the literature available to assist in that area. As mentioned previously, the diagnostic manuals are the primary source for diagnostic procedures, but there are other sources for diagnostic information with a somewhat different objective that should be covered first. One of these is the MB-NET system, this system links Mercedes-Benz with all dealers. The very latest technical information is sent to all dealers using this network. Another source is service information. These bulletins are sent on an ongoing basis and will cover diagnostic information in detail, as well as other technical information that the technician should be aware of. The microfiche with the red band, titled Diagnostic Directory, is a major source of diagnostic information. Whereas the diagnostic manuals are the source for detailed testing of major systems, 
The red fiche cover all areas of diagnosis. It addresses everything from the cause of an engine performance problem to the source of a squeak or a leak. Referring to the red fiche first is a sound policy. It could prevent spending time trying to find the cause of a problem when the answer is already known and covered in the fiche. A final important point to know is that when the fiche is updated and mailed, a printed summary of the new or revised information is included, and it should be posted or circulated in the workshops so that everybody's aware of all the latest topics that are included in the new fiche. This publication, the Diagnostic Trouble Code Reference Guide, is a very popular diagnostic reference. It provides a quick and easy to use reference for retrieving trouble codes and includes all Mercedes that have provisions for diagnosis using an impulse counter scan tool. This manual covers connecting the impulse counter, lists the trouble codes, and provides instructions on erasing the codes. It doesn't include the detailed testing that the diagnostic manual includes, but that may not be required in every case. This brings us to the major diagnostic reference, the diagnostic manuals. This set of manuals provides detailed testing and diagnosis for major systems. It covers Mercedes models produced from the early 80s up to the present. Since this is not a one model year, one model, one manual system, finding the information needed could involve some searching until you become familiar with the manuals. But that search is made easier by this document titled Your Reference. This was initially developed as a handout used to save time when performing shop exercises during training. Let's go through an example of how this is used to locate information in the diagnostic manuals. Let's say the repair order for R140 includes an entry that reads, right front seat does not move fore and aft. Your reference is divided by model, so the 140 section is referred to. Then the system is located. They're listed alphabetically. The manual that seats are found in is identified with a code number in bold type. In this case, it's book nine. And the section in the manual is listed in the last column as section 15.2. To find the title of the book that the code number applies to, refer to the front of the reference, and we find that book nine is volume three. Body and Accessories Manual. The reference listed section 15.2 in this manual. Turning to that section, you will find that an index page identifies section 15.2, part B, as front power seats with memory. And that's the application found in a 140. Let's turn to that section and identify a few key things that you'll need to know when using this set of manuals. The contents page indicates that this test program is divided into two major parts, diagnosis and electrical test program. These two major parts are divided into five smaller chapters. This brings us to the important part. The square in front of the number identifies that number as a chapter number. So we'll go to chapter 11, the function test, to look at how the testing is laid out. The first column is what you're testing. The arrow identifies that the number it's pointing at is a test step. That's obvious as used here, but you'll see why that's important to remember in a minute. The next column tells you what to do. The next column tells you what should happen if everything is okay. And the last column tells you what to do if the test failed. There are two columns, one for each front seat. We're not interested in the left seat. A square and number 23 are listed here, indicating that you must go to chapter 23 for further testing. An arrow and number are located after the chapter number, and it indicates the test step within the chapter that should be performed. In fact, diagnosing the failure in the fore-aft function of the right seat may require performing tests 24 through 28 in chapter 23. So that's how you find your way around in the diagnostic manual. So that's basically it. And every manual has a summary of this and other information on using the manual at the front should you need to refer to it. Within the entire set of current diagnostic manuals, there is one exception to the information contained in them. Engines Volume 1 doesn't just address test programs. For example, 
Almost any specification that you can think of that relates to engine performance is found in Section A. We don't want to take the time now to cover everything that's in this manual. Take the time to look through it when you have the opportunity. To this point, we've covered the current set of diagnostic manuals. But there is a three-volume set of early manuals that your reference will send you to when necessary. If your dealership has the original set provided, they're this light blue set of binders. These binders are replaced by a universal binder with replaceable tags. In these three original diagnostic manuals, most of the test programs are preceded by a troubleshooting chart. Well, that's a brief overview of using the Mercedes-Benz service literature. There's a wealth of knowledge in all of the service literature that was covered, but the only way to become proficient at using it is in fact to use it. Generally, this happens over an extended period, as information is needed on the job. But there's time lost in the process. The Technician Recognition Program is a better way to come up to speed. It's interesting, challenging, and provide some incentives in the process. One element of this quiz program involves mailed quizzes that challenge the skill of the technician at using the literature. These quizzes are excellent training for the technician who must acquire that skill. So to start you in the learning curve, you'll be provided with a quiz based on the type of questions found on the TRP quizzes. To answer the questions, you'll have to use the sources covered in this AV program, as well as other sources that we didn't cover. Follow the instructions that come with the quiz. On successful completion, you'll begin receiving TRP quizzes which will improve your literature skills further. And one final point, we'll be using the literature extensively when you attend training, so you'll need a good working knowledge of how to use it when you arrive at the training center. Well, that's it. Get the quiz done as soon as possible, and remember, you're going to need that knowledge before you attend training. Good luck.